Hello student and welcome back for a lecture series of cam and follower design. <clears throat> so today uh, in a previous lecture we have already discussed about the theory related to uh, cam and follower. Also we have seen a simple numerical with a simple harmonic motion. Okay, uh, in that we was uh, discussed uh, that that uh, forward stroke and return stroke both are in simple harmonic motion. But uh, today we will discuss a pro problem on uh, cam and follower <coughs> for forward motion in the cyclone motion and return motion is a simple harmonic motion. So we will so start with the pro problem. A rotary disc cam with central translatory roller follower has following motion. First, forward stroke of 25 mm in 90 degree of cam rotation with a cycloid motion. Second, the return stroke of 25 mm in a 60 degree of cam rotation with the simple harmonic motion. And third one, that is the remaining period, whatever the remaining period is there, that is totally dwell. Now, here they have provided forward stroke, return stroke and dwell. So that is a R, R, uh, sorry, uh, that is a, uh, both stroke are there and remaining total about 290 degree, that is a forward stroke, 60 degrees is a return stroke. So total is a 150 degree is total in a stroke and remaining all is dwell. The mass of follower is 1 kg and cam speed is a 600 rpm. The maximum pressure angle during the forward stroke is 25 degree and the during a return stroke there is a 30 degree. If the external force during forward stroke is 450 Newton and return stroke is 100 Newton. Design cam, follower, roller pin and spring. Also you have to calculate the maximum torque on cam shaft. Okay, so we know that we have a speed, weight, then uh, stroke angles, uh, then uh, uh, external force maximum external force applied, minimum external force applied and we have to calculate cam, follower, roller, pin, spring as well as the torque on the shaft. So whenever we're going for a cam shaft design, we um, always design based on the torsional moment. So first of all, write down the given data. Uh, stroke is 25 mm, so value of H is equal to 25 mm. Uh, Forward stroke theta O is equal to 90 degree. We have converted into radian that is 1.57 radian. A return stroke is 60 degree converted into radian is equal to 1.047 radian. Mass 1 kg, speed N is equal to 60, 600 RPM. Uh, here the pressure angle is provided. So the uh, forward pressure angle for forward stroke the pressure angle is 25 degree and for return stroke it is 30 degree then maximum external pressure that is 450 rpm minimum external uh, minimum external pressure that is uh, force will applied is 100 newton so first of all we need to assume some basic information as we previous in previous numerical also we have assumed that uh, few de details that is a base circle then roller follower diameter or radius that we initially assumed if it is not given in a problem if it is given we will directly use that data so base circle diameter is considered radius is considered as 30 mm uh, then follower radius that is a roller follower radius is rf is equal to 7.5 mm so material for cam and follower, uh, we have considered alloy steel, 40 Ni, 6 Cr, 4 Mo2 uh, with <coughs> Sigma C, value of Sigma C, 1100 
न्यूटन पर एम एम स्क्वायर विच इज हीट ट्रीटेड अप टू थ्री हंड्रेड बी एच एन ऑल्सो वी हैव एज्यूम द फेस विथ ऑफ कैम दैट इज बी इज इक्वल टू टेन एम एम ओके नाउ वी हैव टू ड्रॉ अ डिस्प्लेसमेंट डायग्राम एंड कैम प्रोफाइल फॉर गिवन कंडीशन दैट इज अ फर्स्ट फॉरवर्ड स्ट्रोक विद द साइक्लोडिक मोशन एंड रिटर्न स्ट्रोक विद सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन so for a cyclonic motion we need to calculate the radius of circle r is equal to hm by 2 pi that is 25 divided by 2 pi r is equal to 3.98 okay now we have to consider a suitable scale to draw this diagram i have considered 1 cm is equal to 20 degree so that i can easily draw the data or displacement diagram so based on that the other dimensions also scaled so according to that uh, we can start uh, <coughs> first uh, we need to draw a displacement diagram so while drawing the displacement diagram uh, whenever the cycloid motion is there a cycloid is the locus of point on the circle which is rolled on the straight line as shown in displacement diagram uh, the follower uh, shown on the shown in displacement diagram of the uh, follower when it moves in a cycloidal motion now how we can draw first of all divide divide the angular displacement of cam during the uh, first stroke that is a forward stroke or you can say out stroke into equal number of parts for example we have do done here with the six number equal parts then draw a diagonal that is f 0 that is diagonal draw this line then draw a circle at a point o or on the diagonal line in a such a way that the circumference is equal to forward displacement that is a h or equation for that is equal to h is equal to 2 pi r that is a radius of that circum circle so using the above equation you can calculate the radius value of r <clears throat> using that value of r again you have to divide the uh, circle into six number of parts that we have uh, shown in the diagram here we have done just a minute here we have drawn circle and this is a diagonal which we have drawn 0 to f and based on this uh, you can uh, the center is uh, plotted over the diagonal this is a center of the circle so with the suitable scale i have drawn this and divided into six segment six parts also the outer strokes also divided into six parts so that we can uh, get a proper points okay now project the circle point to its a vertical diameter then in the direction of parallel to the diagonal that is a 0 f or f0 whatever you can say so corresponding vertical lines you get that is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so uh, that much vertical lines you get that is uh, you can uh, draw those vertical lines okay uh after that draw the curve through the point a b c d okay first of all just project these lines as we have divided it properly now uh, these points have plot on this vertical line so what we get this is a one point this is a middle point and this one is a third point i will draw with the another color so okay, you can understand it properly so this is one is the first because it's a 4 6 uh, sorry 4 1 it's 3 6 uh, uh, sorry 4 uh, 4 5 3 6 and 2 1 okay so when we uh, plot it in a horizontal upper vertical line we get these three points okay so now we have to draw a parallel line from this point 
to line uh, that is a diagonal line OF, a zero F. Okay, so we have plotted this uh, diagonal line. Also, we have drawn over here, and these three lines are we can get. Okay, now if you get the three lines, we get proper uh, points where it is directly connected. Okay, one is connected with the point, uh, one is connected with the first line. So we get this one is a first point. Okay. This one is a first point. Now two is connected with the point B. So here, second point. Then three is connected with the third line here. D is connected here, E is connected here, and F is connected here. So you can draw a smooth curve from these lines. Okay, so you get a particular cycloidal displacement curve. Okay, now next, the second half is a simple harmonic motion. Okay, this procedure we have already discussed in a previous lecture or a previous uh, numerical. What we are doing here, first of all, drawing, or you can say, uh, draw a semi circle with the diameter of uh, stroke that is lift, or you can say stroke, H is equal to 25. So based on that uh, diameter, you can uh, draw a diagram. Then divide semicircle into equal parts. As usual, we have done with the six a number of equal parts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Sorry. One. This one. This one is a one point. Second, third, fourth, five, and six. Okay. So we have divided semicircle into six equal parts. Uh, then we have plotted the points so that we can uh, take. Uh, or draw a particular projection and now divide the angular displacement of cam during outstroke or uh, as well uh, we are doing for return stroke so return stroke into same number of equal parts so here we have divide one two three four five six so we have done that six equal parts i'm just roughly drawing the lines so that you can understand it okay now we have to project these lines in a proper manner okay now what is the next point we have to trace the points so okay so for first six it is the first which we have traced then second point over here third point over here fourth point over here fifth point over here and six point over here which is denoted by g h i j k and l okay now draw a smooth curve between these points so you get what we get you get directly the displacement curve for simple harmonic motion okay so according to this process you can uh, draw a displacement diagram okay Next, we need to draw a, a cam profile. So I have already dis, uh, discussed in the last lecture also how to draw a cam profile by using the distances that is a, a, a 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, 5E, 6F, 7G, 8H, 9I, 10J, 11K, and 12 l so okay so using these distances mark the suitable points and draw a curve okay so that you can get a proper cam profile so first of all you have to draw a base circle so after drawing the base circle you have to point uh, a central uh, or you can say pitch circle of the follower roller follower center then uh, based on the uh, distances as i mentioned of, of here 1a 2b and so on so this plot these uh, distances uh, you should have to plot on the uh, division lines so first of all uh, just explain uh, with the forward stroke 
uh, forward stroke is a 90 degree and we have divided into six segment so plot first of all we have to uh, draw a line of 90 degree from the initial stage so here <clears throat> first line is drawn this is a initial line okay second line this one is a 90 degree okay so this angle is a 90 degree so i have divided into the six segment so first second third fourth fifth and sixth okay so now we have to plot our distances okay from this here we can get a center distance or you can directly uh, draw a points okay so this is the first curve second third fourth fifth sixth okay so this much curve we can get okay now draw a smooth curve to connecting all the points okay so initially you get this curve now second one for a return stroke uh, the, the return stroke angle is a uh, 60 degree. So first of all, draw a line of 60 degree. Then divide into the six segments. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay, so similarly, uh, by uh, using the distance, by using the distance, seven uh, G, eight H, nine I, just plot the marks, uh, marks the points as uh, done in a previous manner. So just mark these points, okay, and draw a smooth curve and connect to the best circle so what you get you get a cam profile diagram i hope you have understood uh, how to draw a displacement diagram as well as cam profile diagram so we go further next one to calculate the maximum acceleration for follower so in previous lecture previous lecture also we have seen these equations Okay, let's go and the angular acceleration or you can say angular speed rather than acceleration, it's angular speed of camshaft omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60, uh, which is uh, uh, n is equal to 600. So what we get uh, omega is equal to 62.83 radian per second. Now here, uh, the cycloidic motion for cyclotic motion, the maximum acceleration of follower during forward stroke. We need to calculate. So A0 is equal to plus minus 2 pi h divided by theta uh, 0 square into omega square. This equation is used to calculate the maximum acceleration for forward stroke. So putting all the values, what do you get? So maximum acceleration plus minus 251.5 uh three one so this much maximum acceleration meter per second square uh, we can uh, find out for simple harmonic portion that is a return stroke uh, a r is equal to minus plus pi square divided by theta r square into h by 2 omega square putting all the values what we get that is minus plus 444.11 meter per second square so if you compare both the maximum value of uh, uh, acceleration will be in a return stroke. Now next <clears throat> step is to calculate the maximum and minimum follower forces. As we know that uh, the external forces we uh, have that are nothing but 400 Newton maximum and minimum 100 Newton. Now, uh, because of the weight of follower and the inertia forces of the follower as it, it rotates continuously, uh, it, it provides a max uh, combined forces, <coughs> that is maximum external force which is applied during rise and return. So first of all, uh, calculate for rise or forward stroke f max is equal to maximum external force on follower plus weight of follower plus inertia force of follower so putting all the values what we get 
how we can calculate weight that is a mass into gravity acceleration or inertia mass into the maximum acceleration so what we get the maximum force on follower during uh, forward stroke is 711.12 newton similarly we have calculated for minimum force minimum force that is <coughs> that is uh, for a return stroke which is in simple harmonic motion so minimum force is calculated p minimum plus mg that is a mass of uh, or weight of follower then inertia force of follower so after putting all the values what we get minimum force applied is 553.91 newton next we have to calculate maximum cam force maximum cam force so initially uh, in last time the velocity v was uh, or pressure angle was assumed that was the zero angle so that's why uh, we don't have the values of a and b now here the values of a and b we are going to assume so a is equal to 3b and uh, mu that is a coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.1 so the maximum force on the cam is during is during uh, the forward stroke is fn is equal to f divided by cos of alpha that is a pressure angle for forward stroke uh, into 2a plus b divided by b into sine of alpha so putting all the values what we get we get uh, that is a maximum cam force for forward stroke is 1164.86 uh, uh, okay so that much force is initially uh, sorry maximum that force can be applied by cam okay so next one radius of curvature of cam so radius of curvature of cam we can we can calculate by using following equation that uh, rc is equal to rp plus y square plus v divided by omega uh, re, re, square raised to 3 by 2 rp plus y square plus twice v by omega divided square minus rp plus y into a divided by omega square so this is the equation we can use to calculate the uh, radius of curvature but uh, we need to first of all calculate the value of rp velocity and why okay so during forward stroke the uh, maximum acceleration is it is in a uh, a is equal to minus 251.3 meter per second square y is equal to y or uh, displacement in case of uh, radius of uh, in case of cyclotic motion y is equal to 3h divided by 4 okay note down this point should be noted down by everyone that y value of y for cyclotic motion is equal to 3h divided by 4 so 3 into 25 divided by 4 y is equal to 18.75 mm velocity of cyclotic motion v is equal to h divided by theta 0 into omega so putting all the values what we get 3.1 for one meter per second as we know that rp is equal to rb plus rf so base circle plus follow circle uh, radius uh, we can get directly value of rp okay so putting all the values in a equation of rc what we get the curvature of radius radius of curvature rc is equal to 36.29 mm so this month radius should we have uh, of by prime circle radius of 37.5 now next one to calculate the maximum contact stresses of cam and follower uh, sigma c is equal to 189.6 into square root of fn by b into 1 upon rc plus 1 upon rf uh, putting all the values as we know the maximum uh, 
a value of fn is 1164.86 value of radius of curvature that is 36.29 then uh, radius of follower that is 7.5 uh, what we uh, calculated the actual or induced sigma c value is 821.66 newton per mm square and design value was 1100 so hence it is uh, seen that uh, the cam and follower are safe for pitting failure next one design of follower rod so design of follower rod are normally done um, for what you can say uh, here we are considering that uh, continuous compressive stresses or the stress induced inside the follower rod are compressive stresses because it's continuously working that is a vertical movement it have material for uh, that rod is plain carbon steel 55 c8 with maximum sigma t value that is yield stress value 400 newton per mm square factor of safety is 5 so design stress is equal to sigma yt divided by fos so what we get sigma c that is the compressive stresses is equal to 80 newton per mm square now tau is equal to 0 0.5 or half of uh, compressive stresses so tau value of design tau is 40 newton per mm square now we have considered for compressive stresses so sigma c is equal to f max divided by area that is pi by 4 d r square so putting all the values uh, the calculated value of dr that is a pin uh, diameter ready uh, sorry that is follower rod radius that is dr is equal to 3.36 so we are just round up the value dr is equal to 4 mm next one design of a roller pin so basically we have to select the material that is alloy steel with the sigma yt value or you can say use same material which we have selected for rod follow rod that is uh, 55 c8 with the value of uh, stress that is yt is equal to 400 newton per mm square now here we are designing a roller pin based on the double shear and crushing stresses so we have should have the value of tau as well as value of crushing stress so crushing stress is equal to sigma yt divided by fos it is near about equals to compressive stresses so 80 newton per mm square and the uh, shear stress is equal to half of crushing stress or you can say half of uh, compressive stresses so that is a 40 newton per mm square now first part design of a roller pin based on the double shear fn is equal to twice pi by 4 dp square into tau uh, putting all the values what you get dp is equal to 4.38 mm so just round up that value or modify that value dp is equal to 5 mm now next design of roller pin based on the crushing stresses so fn is equal to lp dp into sigma cr here we have already consider, uh, we considering the relation between the length and diameter of the pin that is a one point lp is equal to 1.525 times of dp so putting all the values what we get the value of dp is equal to 3.41 mm modified up to the 4 mm so when we compare the both values uh the value got from our diameter got from double shear and well the diameter got from uh, crushing stresses so we conclude that the maximum value or the maximum hampering or you can say so zada uh, effective stress hai, wo hai double shear as per calculation so we have considered the maximum diameter to avoid the uh, double shear effect okay so automatically the crushing effect will be minimized or uh, avoided so selecting the dp is equal to 5 mm uh, and based on the equation lp is equal to 1.25 into dp length of uh, pin length of uh, roller pin is equal to 6.25 mm next one design of spring 
so it's very important to design a particular spin uh, string uh, spring because it is continuously in a fluctuating uh, stresses or loads uh, that because of that it uh, quite uh, having uh, failure in a fatigue stresses okay so we are using Soderbergh's uh, diagram or modified Soderbergh's equations uh, to calculate the uh, exact dimensions of the spring so basically the material oil hardened tempered plain carbon steel wire grade vw with sigma u is equal to 1380 newton per mm square referring phd page number 7.105 modulus of rigidity for spring material g is equal to 79.3 newton per meter square uh, assuming the spring index is equal to c is equal to 8 uh, we know that generally it is uh, lies uh, in between or ranges in between 2 to 10 so we can select any one of them uh, considering factor of safety is 1.5 as we increase the factor of safety the thickness and the dimensions will be increased so that the for optimum uh, design we are selecting fos is equal to 1.5 now calculating the mean load pm is equal to f max plus f minimum divided by 2 so p minimum mean load that is pm is equal to 632.515 newton now next one to calculate the amplitude load that is pa pa is equal to f max minus f minimum divided by 2 so the amplitude load is equal to 78. 605 newton next one to calculate uh, the calculate the design uh, sorry uh, design spring uh, for a repeated load so that's why we have to calculate uh, the sigma a value or you can directly find out the diameter of the spring so based on the repeated load uh, the equation what we get from ph is 7.102 tau a is equal to 8 ks p a d divided by pi d d q or simply you can modify this is 8 ks p a into c divided by pi d square so ks is equal to 4 c minus a 1 4 c minus 4 plus 0 0.615 divided by c referring phd page number 7.100 so after putting the value of CKS is equal to 1.184 putting the value of KS PA C into the equation what we get pi A or tau A is equal to tau A is equal to 5956.37 divided by pi d square or you can say 1895.97 by d square now spring is desired for shear load also so mean load or mean shear load tau m is equal to 8 k uh, ksh pm c divided by pi d square referring phd page number 7.102 uh, here ks is uh, we know that ks is ksh is equal to direct shear stress so ks is equal to ksh into kc kc is a curvature factor referring page page number 7.102 kc is equal to 1.11 ks is equal to 1.184 which we have already calculated so putting all the uh, value of ks and kc we can get a value of ksh that is 1.066 so putting this do value of ksh into the equation of tau m that is a mean shear load uh, the equation we get tau m is equal to 1000 sorry 13735.93 divided by d square so yield strength in a shear for spring wire that we have to calculate based on the both values uh, based on the value of sigma u and based on the value of sigma y that is a uh, equations okay so uh, yield strength varun pan hum log yield strength se bhi shear ka value nikal sakte hai and endurance uh, shear stress bhi nikal sakte hai by considering repeated load 
so out of those which were the values suitable or those value we needed in a further calculation uh, for calculating the diameter so uh, sigma y is equal to 0.5 times of sigma u so sigma y is equal to tau y is equal to 690 newton per mm square then endurance uh, shear stress for repeated load that is equation is uh, tau 0 is equal to 0.263 sigma u that is 362.94 newton per mm square so while calculating the spring diameter you have to find out the exact uh, values okay so that's why we have uh, we are we have to use uh, the above calculated values of uh, empirical relations so these are two empirical relation tau a and tau m we are using this equation using in this equation so that equation is one upon n is equal to tau m minus tau a divided by tau y plus 2 tau a divided by tau 0. So these equations uh, we are referring from PhD page number 7.102. Okay, so based on this equation, you can easily calculate the uh, diameter of the spring wire. Uh, then putting all the values of uh, each uh, parameter, uh, we what we get D is equal to 6.437 mm modified it up to the 7 mm now we have to calculate mid, mean coil diameter capital d is equal to c that is the spring index into the diameter of wire so it is 56 mm so number of active coils it is very important to calculate the number of active coils so PSG page number 7.100 Q is equal to GD divided by 8C cube into N. So we know that Q is equal to stiffness or uh, stiffness we can calculate the mean load divided by deflection. So the maximum load minus minimum load divided by deflection. Deflection that is a, nothing but a stroke that is 25 mm. So 711 putting all the values what you get Q is equal to 6.3 turns. Now next one, uh, the maximum torque acting on a shaft. So based on this maximum torque, we have to design a diameter of camshaft. For cycloid motion, the velocity is equal to 2h divided by theta 0 into v. So what we get, the velocity is equal to 1.999 meter per second. So round up up to the 2 meter per second. Now, how we can calculate the input power input to the cam and follower mechanism? As we know, know that the P is equal to F max into the velocity. Normal power is equal to F max into the velocity. So F max is 711.12 uh, into velocity 2. So P is equal to 1422.24 Watt. Uh, as we are assuming the mechanical efficiency, it is up to the 90 percent so the input power is equal to brake power divided by mechanical efficiency so uh, that operating power or you can say uh, p uh, that is 1422.24 divided by 0 0.9 so the input power is it, it is required pi is equal to 1580.27 watt okay so we know that the input power is nothing but torque into the angular uh, uh, sorry omega pi is equal to t into omega so based on this equation we can find out the value of t that is 25.15 newton meter now last step of the design is design of shaft of camshaft that is a camshaft so material we have selected medium carbon steel uh, 45 c8 with the sig value of sigma u 670 newton per mm square sigma yt is equal to 360 newton per mm square according to the asme code uh, we have to calculate uh, the value of tau based on the maximum ultimate tensile stress as well as based on the yield strength so tau is equal to 0 0.75 into 0 0.18 into sigma u what we get tau is equal to 90.45 uh, 
okay that value we have calculated based on ultimate tensile strength now based on the yield strength what we get the tau is equal to 81 newton per mm square now from both we have to select lower one because lower uh, if you selected maximum value then what we get we get the diameter should be uh, because the stress is inversely proportional with the uh, inversely proportional with the diameter as the stress increases diameter decreases as the diameter increases stress decreases so we are considering lower stress so that the maximum value or optimum value of diameter that we have to calculate it so tau is equal to kl into torque into 16 by pi dq where the kt is a combined shock and fatigue factor that is 1.5 so putting all the values what we get the diameter of the shaft is equal to 13.33 mm uh, you can round off or modify it so the d of modified diameter of the shaft is equal to 14 mm so uh, as per the uh, problem we have find out the all the values uh, which is mentioned or which was required so here is the ending of the design of cam and follower okay so if in uh, three uh, in previous lecture and this lecture we have conducted uh, numericals with the different forward and return stroke applications i uh, request all of you just go through the these equations and theory uh, parts uh, properly if you have any query related to this you are feel uh, please feel free to contact me anytime okay thank you thank you very much uh, for joining this lecture